Now that we've found the velocity, let's go ahead and find the height. We'll also do a quick example using some realistic parameters. Here is our velocity function. Let's give the height function a name. Let's call it y of t. The relationship between this object's height and its velocity is well known from calculus. Velocity is derivative of position. So we can find y without separation of variables or anything of the sort, we will simply integrate to velocity. And everything here except time is a constant, v sub zero and v sub tau and rho. I hope you find this relatively straightforward to integrate. And now we could call it this done, but we're not going to. If you remember in the previous video, we found the velocity. And when we found the velocity function, it didn't have the initial velocity. It had some arbitrary constant c. And we rewrote it so that our constant was replaced with something that has a clear real world meaning. We'll now do the same. We'll get rid of this C and in its place, we'll see the initial height Y sub zero. And the exact way of doing this is not totally straightforward. We'll start by finding y sub zero. I mean, we just plug zero in for time. y sub zero then is this. The exponential of zero is one. Anything times zero is zero. We want to introduce a y sub zero. So the way we're going to do that is in a sense kind of odd. In another sense, it's fairly straightforward. What we are missing, if we want a y sub zero, is this, the c we have. So if we want this, we're going to put it right in there but we don't want to change y. So in addition to that subtraction, we'll add 
the same term. That and that together give us y sub zero. We've got, let's see, our V sub tau T. Our one over rho V sub zero minus V sub tau. And you see the same thing over here, one over rho, v sub zero minus v sub tau. So what we'll do is pull that term in common out. When we pull it out of here, we get one. When we pull it out of here, we're left with this exponential. And there is our position function. And we got rid of this C so that every constant in this equation has a concrete real world meaning. Initial height, terminal velocity, a measure of air resistance, initial velocity, terminal velocity again, and a measure of air resistance again. I think I have changed my mind about doing the example in this video. It will be quick, but I think I'll do the example as its own video.